Okay, we notice the sensory experiences like the flash of lightning and then the crash of thunder. Again, moments later, there is a flash of lightning and then thunder. Was that a good thunder sound? Was that convincing? A flash. That's the sound of a flash, by the way. It's visual, but it has a sound. It's called That's the flash of lightning and then thunder, right? Again, moments later, there's lightning and then thunder. Eventually we notice the pattern and come to expect thunder to follow lightning every single time because that's part of our experience. We've learned this pattern to expect this pattern. Lightning and then thunder. But what, 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 wait a minute, wait, hold on. What if we see lightning, but then several seconds go by and there's no thunder? What if we hear thunder, but without any prior flash of lightning? Has that ever happened to you? What if we heard thunder, but there was no lightning right before that? What if we saw some lightning, but then there's no thunder? There's still no thunder. There's, it's, oh, and then there's this quiet, muffled rumble that we can barely hear over the background noise around us way after the lightning. That was like seven, eight seconds, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a long delay. I don't know if that's related. That could be just some kind of random background rumble, muffled rumble, right? Okay, so when our expectations are violated, that experience is confusion. That's what confusion is. The, there's an expectation, then it gets violated. If the confusion is momentary, then we simply forget about it. It's not important to us. Yeah, our expectation was violated, so what? We may not be interested in a particular instance of confusion. However, if we were kids, right, and we were expecting to stay home from school because of a dangerous storm, that means the school's going to be canceled. So we're going to have a storm, it's going to cancel school, and then we will not have to take that test that we expect to be disappointing. Because, you know, I haven't prepared for it, and it's hard, and it's really, I don't want to take the test, and there's a storm and sometimes when there's a storm school could get canceled like if it's a snowstorm or a hurricane sometimes school could get canceled we won't have to take the test at least not yet and I expect the test to be disappointing so then we kids may be more interested in what is going on with the thunder and lightning normally I wouldn't really care if there's thunder and then is there was there lightning first I don't know who cares right but now I'm interested now I'm interested because I don't want to take the test. Not today, okay? School could be canceled if there's a storm, right? So we wonder enough about the storm to explore the issue, to explore the details. Is the storm over? Will school be canceled or not? Are they going to uncancel school? I thought they were going to cancel it. Now are they going to say, oh no, we changed your mind. Now you have to come to school. Oh. Imagine that we are expecting for a test at school to be disappointing. So that's worry. And then further imagine we're expecting for school to be canceled, which is hope, a possible relief to the worry. That's hope. Maybe school will be canceled and we won't have to take the test. Now, what if the storm is over and now suddenly school is actually not canceled? I thought it was going to be canceled. Maybe it even was canceled. Now they're going to withdraw the cancellation. Now everybody has to come and there's going to be tests. Oh, wouldn't that be disappointing, frustrating, actually. It'd be frustrating. It would be infuriating. I can't believe they've done this to me. It's really inconvenient and, you know, right? So it's frustrating because we had worry, then we had hope, a relief for the worry, and now something's interfered with the hope. We're going to have to withdraw the hope. It's, ah, uh, we're wrecked to worrying. That is so frustrating. Dang it. I fearfully expect to be disappointed by the test, you know? I fearfully expect to be disappointed, and then I expect for a particular circumstance or condition the storm, to relieve the fright and disappointment background thing, right? I, I'm expecting to be disappointed. I'm worried about being disappointed. And I have a hope. Uh, 
It's the storm. It's going to save me from school. And then that hope is dissolved. That is so frustrating, right? But how did disappointment ever arise? Can there be disappointment without a prior expectation?